Hey everybody, Robbie here with SUU Aviation. Today we're gonna to be talking about how to become a helicopter pilot. We're gonna kinda of go through the whole process from beginning and end, how to know if you're qualified, um, if it's the right career path choice for you, and all the way through how to pick your school, where you're gonna find funding at, and then how you're gonna get all the hours that you need to go out and get that, uh, that dream job flying a helicopter. So let's get into it. So before we jump into talking about if you're qualified or not, let's talk about if you should even do this at all. And that it really comes down to your passion. Being a helicopter pilot is something you have to be passionate about. It's not easy. Um, you're not gonna be rich and make a ton of money off of this. You'll have a good career, you make good money, but this is for people that just love flying helicopters. So definitely encourage you, go out, get an intro flight, get your hands on the controls of a helicopter with a certified instructor pilot and try it out and see if it really is what you for sure want to do with your life, okay? So first off, let's get into how are you qualified for this. Um, the first thing you need to look at is do you meet the FAA requirements to even start learning how to fly? Uh, you have to be at least 16 years old to start learning, 17 before you can actually get your private pilot certificate and then you move on from there. You also need to be able to read, write, understand, speak English um, to train in the U.S. Um, and beyond that, it, uh, there's a lot of really funny things that uh, people get the notion from military requirements and stuff um, that, uh, that just aren't true on the civilian side. So for instance, there's no height requirements at all. It's all about are you comfortable or not in the cockpit? Can you manipulate the controls? Um, also, you don't have to have 20-20 vision. You just have to have correctable to 20-20. So you can wear glasses, contacts, those types of things. Beyond that, a lot of it comes down to the medical requirements. So you're, you need to go and uh, set up an appointment with an aviation medical examiner, or we call them an AME. Um, that AME is gonna be able to um, talk with you about your medical history and about any um, other requirements, including color vision, um, and uh, just being able to physically be healthy and safe to fly a helicopter. Um, down in the description, we're gonna put a link to the FAA website so that you can get more information on where those medical examiners are at, so you can go talk to the doc um, about becoming a helicopter pilot, um, see if the FAA is okay with you flying. Um, the last thing I wanna tell you about um, with this is just that there are no uh, maximum age requirements. There's no mandatory retirement age. So as long as you can pass that medical, you can keep flying helicopters. So some of you that maybe are a little bit older, don't count it out just because uh, because you're older. You can. There's lots of people that fly well into their 70s. The next thing we're gonna talk about now that you've decided that this is for you, that you wanna be a helicopter pilot, is where are you gonna train? A lot of really great options. I'd like to start by just saying that all these options are good. Um, and uh, not every option is for everybody. You need to find out which option is right for you and I definitely encourage you to go out and look at every option out there to really find out which is the best for you. The first thing that most people think about is the military route. Um, absolutely fantastic route. Lots and lots of pilots trained. Some of the best pilots in the industry are military trained pilots, but it's not for everybody. I'm a vet, I love the military, but it's not for everybody. We understand that. And so today we're gonna to focus on the non-military side or the civilian flight training. And in civilian flight training, there's really two different types of schools, um, two different thoughts and mentalities that you can go through. Um, and that's degree options and non-degree options. So schools that offer a college degree and those that don't. Um, again, both very good. We're gonna talk first about the non-degree options. So these schools, um, they're, they're just very different than the degree ones. Um, their, their focus is really getting you your flight training as economically as possible and generally quickly as possible and with the most flexibility um, with your schedule. So these tend to be really good if you need to work while you're going to school, um, if you need to take a little extra time or if you just want to fast track through it, push through it quick. Um, really, really, really good schools out there that are non-degree options. I definitely encourage you to go out and look at them and see if one fits right for you. Some of the downsides to these schools are simply that you're not going to get um, as many hours usually from these schools and you're not going to get advanced trainings and a lot of times not all of the same certificates and, uh, and everything. Also that because of those reasons the um, job placement rates tend to not be as good out of those schools. Um, so sometimes you can struggle after you graduate from those schools to, to get those first jobs and work your way through. Um, but again, great options. Please go out and check out these schools. Um, they just might be the exact right fit for you in your situation. So the last option is degree programs like ours, where you're getting your flight training done, um, all of your FAA flight certificates, and at the same time, you're earning a college degree. These uh, programs tend to cost a little bit more, but pay off big time with job placement rates 
and becoming a well-rounded pilot. Um, instead of just learning strictly how to fly, you're learning how to become a pilot by taking a lot of additional courses, such as uh, weather theory, aerodynamics, safety. Um, so you can do a lot more than just fly the actual helicopter, um, which, makes, uh, which is a big advantage when you're applying for jobs, that you can do more than just fly the helicopter. You can actually, actually because, because you have degrees, you can work up in management positions and things like that. It also tends to give you the ability to the, bridge the gap easier, which when I say bridge the gap, what I mean is when you graduate, you have a certain amount of hours, but you need to get more experience and flight time to get the good jobs or especially your dream job. Um, with a degree program, you tend to move through that time period quite a bit faster and easier with a degree program. Um, so the reality is with all of these options is you, you need to go and research all of them. Do your research, visit the schools, um, see what they're like, find which one is the best option for you. That's really the key here is finding the school that is right for you no matter whether it is a degree program, non-degree or the military. I'm um, finding that um, and I know that funding tends to be a really big key um, issue. It's one of the big hurdles that you gotta get over to become a helicopter pilot. We're gonna be coming out with a lot of videos that talk about funding, so make sure that you subscribe so that you can see those. But we're not really gonna get into that too much today. So once you've decided on a school, let's talk about what the process is gonna look like at those schools as far as the ratings go. So you're gonna start out with your private and then work into instrument and then finally into commercial and commercial is where the FAA gives you the go ahead to make money as a helicopter pilot. This is where it really changes between the degree and the non-degree options because at a lot of non-degree options, this is where your flight training um, can uh, be done and you go out and try to find a job. Very, very difficult. Um, you're really limiting your options when you don't get your instructor ratings. So you want to make sure that you um, take that into consideration when you're determining how much money it's going to cost, what ratings you want to get, everything is, is that if you just get commercial, you can still do it, but it may be a little bit more of a difficult road. Um, if you continue on, you're going to get your instructor rating and then your instrument instructor rating. And uh, at a school like ours, that's kind of where you're, you're ready to go out in the industry at this point. You are a certified commercial pilot, you're a certified instructor pilot. Um, you have a lot of ratings um, or advanced training as far as night vision goggles, long line, turbine time, high altitude mountain training, a lot of the things that are really going to set you apart, as well as having a degree um, so that uh, you, you just qualify yourself for a lot more jobs out there and you kind of put yourself at the top of the resume pile. Um, for those competitive jobs. Um, flight hours wise, you're gonna have somewhere between 150 and 200 hours. Our students always have more than 200 hours of experience at this point and are uh, just ready to go into that first, uh, first job. Now what you really need to understand, I wanna make sure this is really clear and critical for you, is that uh, just because you're done with school doesn't mean your work is done as a helicopter pilot. Probably your most difficult um, time as a helicopter pilot is going to actually be after graduation and that first one to two years where you are trying to build experience. We call it the hours gap in the industry, um, in between that 200 and 1,000 hours. Um, those jobs tend to not pay the best, um, and you're really in the grind. You're gaining experience. You're proving to the industry, to employers, that you can operate a helicopter safely and that you're gonna be a good employee. Um, at 1,000 hours, that's really where you step into the next level of jobs where now you're making decent money and, uh, and a lot of the uh, a lot more fun jobs are out there at a thousand plus. You're still not going to quite be into the dream job, dream job area. Um, those jobs tend to be up above 3,000 plus hours. Um, so you kind of have these just building hours, building hours until eventually that you can get there. Uh, I would say that you're generally going to have to plan on from beginning of flight training until dream job. You're probably looking in the five to six years um, before you finally get there, but that's no different than most industries, right? You work your way through um, and uh, being a helicopter pilot that way. You work through and eventually um, you will get that dream job and you will be making really good money and have a great career ahead of you. All right, so that's it guys. That's uh, kind of a really general breakdown of how to become a helicopter pilot. I hope you enjoyed it. If you liked it um, and you thought it was helpful, make sure to uh, like the video. That way you can get out to more people, help more people get into this industry where we really need more pilots. Um, we'd really appreciate that. And uh, make sure you subscribe so you can see some of those funding videos and some of the other fun videos that we're gonna be putting out here pretty quick. And other than that, we'll see you next time.